hate puppies. Good podcast. I feel threatened. Hmm. Every time. Stu? Yep. Speak up. Stu. One more time. I don't no. think I don't think he's there. No, I don't think so either. Weird because he's you know, he said he was gonna be here. I recall. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, the only podcast dedicated to hearing Troy in a bad mood. <laughs> Tis that. <laughs> And solving first world problems. And this week, helping you figure out which fat tire you should be drinking. Thank God we got fat tire here to bring me up into a better mood. It's going to. I have confidence. Actually, now that I say it out loud, it's not going to put me in a better mood. Now that it, it all you, comes pouring back into you, my head you, from last week. You don't like what they've done. Yeah, it's not going to be good. I Taste. understand. Nothing you can do about that, Troy. This is not your choice. Yep. This is New Belgium Brewery's choice. Yeah, we thought we had a big crew tonight. Now we don't. The good news is that uh, today was the day of the Daytona 500 or the uh, smash your car. I totally forgot and didn't watch any of it. I usually try to watch some of it, but I did not watch any today. Did I miss anything? uh, Rex. Yeah, that was about it. Outside of that, (laughs) you know, they're mostly turning left. And they go for a long yeah. time. So, no. It looked like every other NASCAR race I ever saw. Yeah. I was very fortunate, though, that I had I had golf and Tiger Woods was in it. So, it was like I was able to watch the Genesis Open. I was able to watch some Tiger Woods. Yeah. Have it's you exciting. watched any of the uh, Netflix show? I'm dying to. I have not yet. So good. Is it? I watched, like, there's eight of them. I watched seven of them. Did you watch the F1? No, because... Did? I just really can't get into F1. And, and I, I, but, but I heard the show. I've was heard it's amazing. Phenomenal. I've heard it's amazing. But I also don't want to get into F1. Why is that? That's weird. Because I already care about some sports and I really don't have any more, don't have more bandwidth. Bandwidth for any. I mean, I've all but given up baseball, even though it's one of my favorites, just because of bandwidth. I mean, that literally, there, there's, I mean, it takes so much time. Yeah, long ago I, I relegated baseball to background noise, and I love yeah. it again. I'm I'm a huge fan of keeping up with the scores and stuff like that. But as for like sitting down and watching my team play game after game after game times 162 plus playoffs, like I just don't. I watch enough live baseball with my kid that like, and I have more invested in that honestly. See, I, I I love baseball for the simple reason that, I, well, I like it on Sundays. Yes. Because I come out here, the Cubs typically play during the day. Yeah. And I come out here and I take a little nap. And I tell everybody, dad's going to go watch his Cubs game. If you need me, I'll be out back. <laughs> and they're like, I don't want to go out there and see the Cubs game. It's when, I, it's when I learn. That's how I learned the art of the nap was thanks to WGN and the That's Cubs right. on a right after school. That's it. And so Sunday. 2 to 4.30 on a weekday. <laughs> I revisit that. I revisit my childhood naps. I just come out here and I sit down. And then, you know, by about the third third inning, I'm, I'm asleep. I wake yeah. up about the seventh inning and go. Oh yeah, I let's should, check in on this. I should have a beer and. What's watch the best stuff? napping sports? Baseball, for f- number one for me. Okay. Golf. Golf was be. I have three that I'm thinking of, and we pretty much mentioned them already. All right, so baseball and golf are up there, and racing. Okay, so to me, racing actually doesn't even hold my attention enough to nap. Oh really? Yeah, I don't like. It's like you hear that that boogie boogie boogie. Uh, there's too much yelling. I okay. Like, I like the so that would be a distant third if we're if we're saying those are the three napping yeah, yeah. sports. That's a distant third. I get the white noise droning yeah, of the yeah. engines, but they tend to get a little too excited. They yell too much. Well, and they've kind of changed it all up where they do like the race within the race where there's like uh, what do they call it? stages? You know, it's like yeah. It's a, so there's excitement. It, yeah, I can't have that. A lot of starting and stopping and yeah. So I think I think golf and baseball. Now that'd be a tough one to get. That's tough. That's tough. It's a one-two punch for uh, Napping Hall of Fame right there. First ballot Hall of Famers in the napping wing. I guess if I'm going to take it, I'm going to say 
that I actually like baseball better for napping, even though it is. The I would more, say, yeah, it's a little more aggressive. Yeah. There's a little more noise, but Cause you know what they do right in golf. They've, and they've done this for a while. It's the red zone, right? You see yeah. somebody hit, boom, he hit a shot. Let's go over here. Watch this guy hit a shot. Oh, let's go over here. This guy's in trouble. Let's flip back to this hole. Like, yeah, it's not, you're not just following one person because if, because then if you, if they broadcast a golf, like they broadcast baseball. Oh, be horribly. How so. many times? It's like time between pitches and times between actually hitting of the golf ball. That would be great napping though. If I had to yeah. watch Mickelson walk, <laughs> you know, that would, that would definitely. Well, now you don't get to see him cause he's not in the PGA. So no, unfortunately not. Yeah. I don't even know how to watch the live. I don't think anyone does. It's very, they did sign a contract. They're on the CW. Now, I don't know if that's official, like if they're actually showing anything. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Nobody wanted them. Which is weird because they got all the names. Yeah, but that it's basically turned that everyone who's gone to live wasn't cutting it at, on the PGA anymore. They were all washed. Unf well, there's there's still some talent there, but I know what you're saying. It's on like, a regular like they weren't winning on a regular basis. Like, yes, huge names, major winners, like guys who still could win. But they when you don't win Well, first off, like I was watching a couple episodes with my wife. A lot of people don't know this, for those that do, do bear with me. But the way golf works for the pros, it's a four day tournament, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The first two days you have to quote unquote make the cut, yeah, which so basically makes the cut. If you don't make the cut, you get zero dollars. So you've traveled across the country, gotten, you know, a house to rent with your caddy, with your family. You've spent tens of thousands of dollars just to get yeah. there and you get zero dollars. Well, so here's a pro tip. Make, make the cut. The cut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's what you should do. Yeah. But I do think for whatever reason, baseball is a better. Maybe it's because like my grandfather napped to it. It's like I've seen Look, adults nap to baseball my whole life. I was going to say, people have been napping the baseball since baseball got on TV, but really, people have been falling asleep in the stands since baseball started. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> like, it's a beautiful thing. It is. So, I think that's my number one seed for napping. I yeah. Like, I like to nap to baseball. I agree. I used to when I was a little kid, and this actually is what ruined me for, like, podcasts and everything. I would have a hard time sleeping at night And when I lived in Arizona. I lived in Arizona for a time. What? Yeah, I did. Since when? Yeah. You're did. just now telling me this. I know. I'm just... 13 just, years later. Here we are. <laughs> so I did. I did some you time. Learned something new every day. Did some time in the desert, and for whatever reason, the way the desert worked, I could pick up a radio signal that was coming in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was picking up a radio signal that was putting out Dallas Mavericks games, not Phoenix it. Suns. It just drifted through the damn desert. Yeah. And I could get this signal, and it was like, it seemed like they played every day. Yeah. And so. I would put on Dallas Mavericks games and I would listen to them talk and just the squeak of the, the shoes oh, yeah. and the dribble, 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 and then just the talk. And it like, that would put me to sleep. And I've that never is the, listened to a basketball game and tried to fall asleep, but I could see that as a audio medium for sure. It's what, it's why now I have to listen to like podcasts or something at yeah, night. You did that to me. I put that on you. No, oh, it's brutal. It is. But yeah, that was it. It was, it was, damn Dallas Mavericks games yeah. that would come over and there was like Mark Aguirre, not Mark Maguire, <laughs> yeah. but Mark Aguirre and all these guys. Like that was my team. Nice. When I was a little kid. Yeah. And it, so it got me. So I can also nap to basketball, but only on the radio. Yeah. Can't it's, it, baseball is the best. So for you got to fire up the transistor when you get into bed or lay on the couch. It's basically it. I would sit that little clock radio going. It would, I used to love music and I used to listen to music at night, but I could never fall asleep to it because I would, it would be playing. I'd be singing it in my head. I would be listening to the music. Like I could never fall asleep to it. Dude, music has become a drug that's more expensive than, than cocaine or heroin or any of them to me. Really? I screwed up. It's man. fallen out of my, uh, I screwed out of up. my day to day life now. Thanks to podcasting here in the last. So, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to take you back. A few years, I had gone over to a buddy's house down in Charlotte, and he was he was he was playing these these speakers, and I was like, "Man, your stereo is really good. Like, I really like this stereo you have. What do you you know? What do you? What's your setup?" Bose. No. 
And he, he goes, he goes, oh yeah, I got, I got Sonos. And I was like, the so- Bose wave speaker. <laughs> Yeah, remember all the commercials for that thing, dude? And it had like it was like a ma- a mouse like trap or mo- what the fuck am I trying to say? I've been drinking since like I have no idea what you're trying to say. A mouse trap, you know, like when like they like put the cheese at the end of the, the the run and then the mouse and then he has to figure it out and that's how like they test them. The Bose Wave speaker did that. It looked like that. Oh, inside. okay, okay, yeah, yeah. It was like dead ends and different areas. So it was like it was the acoustic mass would take the music. Yeah, and it was it like would, big curve front yeah, it on would it, funnel it through all these yeah. different channels, and like, and this is the perfect sound on the other end of that. Like what? Yeah, does that even work? But then again, Germans. Yeah, I'm sure they were right. <laughs> yeah, it's a mechanical. <laughs> yeah, so they they had it figured out. But then I, I was at my buddy's house and I was listening to this. He was like, "Oh no, it's a Sonos." I was like, really? And he goes, yeah, it's that one speaker right there. I was like, one speaker? Like, this is filling the room. And he's like, oh, you should hear it. And he cranks it. And I was like, okay, this is like some of the best sounding music I've heard in a while. Those speakers were perfect. So the Sono system, like, that's for like, is that, I always thought that was like a rich people had that like, integrated into their house like it was a like a whole setup where like you had to have like it was literally built into your home well so they do they have they have sonos that you can build into the walls and stuff Uh uh-huh what made sonos famous was their ability to create a musical ecosystem through your wi-fi so all of these speakers don't require so was so they're not older than wi-fi has been around they are not oh okay i thought they were older than that no sonos like a 2007 thing kind of 2008. Okay. I mean, they're they're really not that that old in the grand scheme of things. But their whole reason for being was that the speaker itself does not require an amplifier. The amp is the built, amp's in. built in it, so it does require it. It doesn't require a standalone amplifier. Yeah, you don't, like a lot you don't of need speakers. a receiver. Remember, you yeah. you have to get a receiver, yeah. and you got to run speaker wire to your speakers and yep. it powers the speaker. This has the power built in, so it's got the amp there. But then it's connected to Wi-Fi, and it can connect to all the other speakers. Now, we've all had Bluetooth, right? Yeah. We, we, you, you walk too far away from your speaker, your phone disconnects, it falls apart. Even if you get Bluetooth speakers that communicate with each other via Bluetooth, and you set them up all over the room, you still get little snips and snaps I, and I, pops. I will and, never understand Bluetooth. Like, you know, I have the hearing aids of Bluetooth, and, like, some days they work great. Some days they're hit and miss. Some days... I'll be walking down the street and I'll drop my hand down by my side and one will cut out, but the other will still work. That's Bluetooth. Some days I'll sit my phone down and walk out of the room and down the stairs and around four corners and one will work or they'll both still work till I finally get out of range. And then sometimes I'll walk around one corner, five feet away and it'll cut out. Like there's no, that is Bluetooth in a nutshell, but why? Like it's just a flawed technology. It really is. Like it requires a direct Line of sight almost. But some until it doesn't. Until it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's the thing. But like I understand the direct line of sight. I fully get that. Yeah. But sometimes it doesn't. No, sometimes it's great. You yeah. walk around the corner and the music's still going, you're yeah. like, can't believe that worked. Other times you're standing right next to it and it's like Yeah. You're like, hey, thanks a lot, Bluetooth. Yeah. Bluetooth is is really only good in a car. We had those uh, Bluetooth speakers, the portable ones that were supposed to sync up. Yeah. And they worked for a minute. But that's even all the Bluetooth speakers I get that are supposed to sync up. I've got some in here right now. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, you'll walk in between the two of them and one of them cuts (laughs) out. And you're like, that shouldn't happen. They're still only 15 feet apart. I'm not a brick wall. And they have a 200 foot. But no, that 15 feet was too much because I... I carried my ass through it. Yeah. No, it's 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 horrible. So the Sonos goes over Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi is a far better technology because as opposed to working directly from my phone, i.e. I'm beaming from my phone to the speaker itself. Yeah. When it's on Wi-Fi, I just say, hey, I want to hear this song. It sends it up to the internet, and then basically the speaker goes, okay, we'll get that, and starts downloading it directly from the internet, not yeah. from the phone. Yeah. So your phone can, I can leave. So it is re- relying on the quality internet. of your Wi-Fi. Hundred percent. Okay. That's the one thing that like. That's the that's the one knock. Yeah. But for whatever reason, these things will sync up to the point that there's no delay at all between all of them. They're getting the exact same feed, 
and they're all pulling their own feed and they're all getting at the same time and it, it works flawlessly. That's nice. So I was at my buddy's house and I'm like, yo, the sound quality is amazing. Then he's explaining like what the whole principle is. I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. Well, then young Jimmy, you know, he's he's a, he's a listener. Everyone here is familiar with young Jimmy. Tech guy. Tech guy through and through. Yeah. So he, when it comes to audio, he's an audiophile. Yeah. Like to the 10th degree, he loves listening to music. He understands it. He gets it. But he's also a total tech dork. So he gets all of that, or I guess the technical term is geek, not dork. Yeah. My, my apologies, young yeah. Jimmy. So he's a total tech geek. And he's like, man, it's like perfect, the sound quality I get out of these and how well it works. He's gotten to the point where he has like 14 of these things in his house. Holy shit. So anywhere he goes, he's like, music here, music here, not music there, not walking there. Sounds amazing. So a few weeks ago, I've heard Jimmy's. I've heard my buddy Matt telling me about it. And I've heard them, and I'm like, these sound amazing. Well, then, I was at this dude's house a few weeks Another ago. Another dude. Another dude. No Third right? dude Yeah, with the, with the Sonos. Yeah, it's like prom night. <laughs> so, third dude. So, I'm, I'm in this guy's house. Gentleman caller, I think, is what they're called. Yes. <laughs> now, he's got it set up where it's all over the house. Like, he's got it. Well, it sounds like young Jimmy and your other buddy does. Yeah. So or no, you're, you're the first guy have one. One, and I was blown away at yeah. how good that one speaker sounded in his house. I was like, okay, this is impressive. Young Jimmy has 14, so unless he has about an 18 or 20 room house, I'm assuming he has some. He has music everywhere. Yeah. That dude can't take a shit without it having to go through a bass note. <laughs> you know? And not just his. So It's helping him. So I go to this dude's house, and he's got them upstairs, downstairs, everywhere. He's got the full-blown setup i think the listeners are our listeners that have been listening for a while they i think they're they can see they know where where this this is going going. (laughs) they know where this is going (laughs) so i'm standing in this dude's house and this dude is one of these guys where he obviously does exceptionally well for himself yeah when i tell you that this guy has a pool in his backyard with a grotto i mean he actually has a grotto there's a a rock outcrop that builds up over this one section of the pool with a waterfall coming off at the top. Nice. You swim through the waterfall. You go into the grotto. There's speakers in there. Oh, well, yeah. And what are you going to have a grotto with no speakers in it? Come on. So the, the, the 800,000 BTU propane heater that's hooked up to his pool. Yeah. The heat comes out from the grotto and then into the rest of the pool. Oh, so it's always nice and warm in there. It's the warmest spot, plus it's baking in the sun in this little oven with the waterfall to kind of keep it all in. Yeah. You sit in there pumping tunes. Like, this guy has way too much He's figured it out. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I want everything. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I'm at his house, and he's got all this great stuff, and the one thing that I can't get enough of, I'm like, yo, your stereo sounds really good. And he's got the Sonos everywhere. So I'm listening to his Sonos, and I'm like, now I'm like, all right, I'm with this guy. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess with this guy all night. I'm like, turn off that speaker, turn on the speaker. Okay, turn on that speaker up there. Let's go walk through the house, and I want you to make the music follow me. And he's like, he's doing it, and he's doing it easily. I'm like, all right, this is really pretty dope. So you're thinking that you're going to trip him up. I can't trip him up. Okay. It's crazy. But you're kind of expecting That's to trip was, him up? No, I was, I, was like, I was like, I was basically trying to have him... Show me that they're not worth the money. Yeah. They're expensive. And. Well, I'm assuming Grotto guy. Yeah. He's <laughs> got all the shit stuff. speakers. No. So then I'm like, okay, this really sounds good. Well, then late night, all the women come back and then they come back. Boo. With a bunch of other women. Boo. And you and your buddy were just hanging out, having a good time. We were just watching the kids, hanging out. We were eating pizza, listening to music. Things were good. And then the women showed up. And like 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 ten women showed oh, up. Oh, gross! All sorority girls, mm. various ages. Sorry, dude. Ugh. Some Wreck, of which wrecked your party, dude. Some of them were like super young, and that's Ooh. disgusting. No, disgusting. thank you. Yeah, no. I was like, <laughs> you look like you haven't even had a kid. Oh my god, get out of here with that! Hey, lack of C-section scar, beat it. Stay out of the grotto. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. Yeah, exactly. Hey, put your clothes on and go the fuck home. Yeah. Now, okay, so you get it. Yeah. I'm with you. So then he's got all these girls there and they're like, well, let's, let's dance. You know, they, so he cranks it up. I hadn't heard the Sonos like crank. Yeah. 
man, the sound quality was flawless at a thousand decibels. Everybody's dancing, going nuts. I was like, okay, hold on. Sonos is the world's baddest speaker. They have good music taste. What are y'all listening to? Or is he blaring sad Eddie Vedder? I ended up, no, no, no. I ended up getting into a, uh, like a, a music off with some ugh, young, ugh. young woman who was a, uh, an EMT. What's she know about music? Apparently more than me. <laughs> when it comes to young, <laughs> things yeah. that young girls like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, even when we got to Outcast, I was like, nope, here's the answer. And she was like, absolutely not. These girls are not going to dance to that. I was like, oh, they're going to dance. Watch this. So fresh and so clean. And they're like, oh, this is cool. And she's yeah. like, wrong. Bombs over Baghdad. Yep. And I was like, okay, you apparently know, you know what's going you're on. Not the, you're, not that, you're not that guy. I'm apparently not you're that You're not guy. the DJ for the party scene. I'm, I'm, I don't think that I am. No. She, she took me to town. Well, I would. Yeah, that makes sense. That Which was unfortunate. Out. It was unfortunate because I had like big plans <laughs> i was like i was i was ready to play some music but i was blown away by these sonos and so by the end of the night like that i'd always had this this little this little itch and i'd been trying not to scratch it for years but that set it that set the hook dude it ruined me to the point that i turned to him kind of just drunkenly in the middle of the night and i was like you just cost me like four thousand dollars and he's like what are you talking about and i was like no i'm serious dude you just fucked me. Because now you're like asking like, what's this one cost? You yes. know, what's, what's, what's this model for? And what's this one for? And, and then I'm like mapping my house in my head. Yeah. And like, I need two of those in there by the record player. I need one over here. I definitely have to find a way to make it so the pallet house thumps. Yeah. Like, and then in my mind, how I justified it was, oh, I'm going to keep all my speakers that are in the pallet house because I'm going to get this little port that's like $400 yeah. that plugs into the receiver out here, but at least allows it to tie into the Sonos system. Yeah, because you just upgraded the speakers out here a couple weeks ago, literally like two or three weeks ago. This is all the speakers from inside the house yeah. that have been downgraded. So now this whole room had what used to be the whole house's stereo in this room. I can how many speakers are in this room? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a sub. But that's it. <laughs> In this 24 by 16 room. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's open with no walls. But, In a metal ceiling. <laughs> but it's these two that were really yeah, you put the big, the two up big ones. Yeah, it's the big old JBLs that I've had since college that are now in here. Yeah, so you had a surround sound, so you had the one in each corner. One in the front center yeah. and the sub. Sub under the bar. Hold on. Yeah, so you had six, and then you've added two more. So that's eight. Mm -hmm. Nice. And but, it does pump in here now. Oh, it's ridiculous. But, but now this room, so now this can play off Sonos with the little adapter thing that you that's bought. That's the beauty of it. So, so Sonos not only plays, you don't have to buy their speakers to use their system. They can if turn If you your, buy that port. You thing. can buy the... You could play your crappy stuff. Yes. The sound quality out here with all these speakers is not equivalent to what's in the house. Now. Yeah. And so this dude did, this whole thing has cost me way more than it should have. I've got more in Sonos than I do in Solo Stove and Yeti combined. That's saying something. That's saying a lot. Yeah. And that's unfortunate, but that's the truth. And what's, how long have you had it now? Two weeks. My wife's sick of it. Really? Because you're just like, because it's it's disruptive. If you don't want to hear the music, it's disruptive. She has the app. I was like, get the app. This is how you turn it down. This is how you change the music. I've told everyone in the house, just get the app. You can control all of these speakers too. But yet they don't seem to get it because when my eyes crack and I hear no music, the whole house wakes up with me. You're not even like. Getting out of bed before you're turning it on. I haven't even unplugged my phone from the wall <laughs> before the music starts. Because right now, there's now Sonos in the bedroom, in the office, in the traditional music room. Yeah. In the family room. Which is open to the kitchen. On the screened-in porch. Which, yeah, is and, right by the kitchen. And out in the pallet house. So I can walk from here, outside... Hear the same song. Go into walk the in the house. Hear the song. 
perfectly up your stairs. Every, up the stairs, hear the song. No matter where I go, I never not hear the song. Except the kids' room, it's in a distance. Yeah. But it's thumping so damn hard. And there's a sub in there now. But don't you see where that's annoying to the people who don't want to hear what you're listening to? I also see how annoying those people are. <laughs> <laughs> to you on a daily basis. I got yes. you. Like, yeah. I get that we're all annoyed. Yeah. One of us is right. Why don't you just buy some Sonos headphones and you can bebop around listening to whatever you want without bothering anybody? You know, the thought crossed my mind. And then it left. Well, one would cost a lot and the other would be rarely would be somewhat affordable. So which way did I go? <laughs> 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 there was never an option. You got to the fork in the road, and there was no fork. No, <laughs> I was like, "Looks like you could go right or left, but you can only go, go right." right. Oh, they blocked left off. <laughs> yeah, it's what highly, a shame. Highly unfortunate. Yeah. No, I snapped. It's over. This house has music. Is it? I'm. I'm guessing you still love it. You're not regretting any of it. There's one speaker going back. Okay. I, the speakers you ordered I too named, many? Yeah, the speakers I named are all staying. Okay. One of them, I was like, clearly, that was $600 too much. That has to go back. <laughs> That's where you drew the line. It was it was ludicrous. I was like, well, what are you going to do with that? So how many different varieties of speakers are there? Or how many do you have, I guess? Because I'm assuming they have a bunch of different varieties. Yeah, I've got... So there's like the big dogs. Which, yeah. And when I say big dog, I'm talking like... They're like bookshelf speakers, you know? They're... Just over a foot, yeah. like eight inches. Like, it's not a big speaker. So, actually, the wife's very happy that there's less speakers visually. Space, yeah. Yes. And they're good looking. They're, they're, they're clean. Yeah. The one in the family room I'm upset about, though, because I had it in a special, I had it in a spot that, like, filled the house. And my wife walked in from a girls' weekend and was like, that is not staying there. And the, I was like, the one on the floor, the big one on yes. the floor. That was bigger than a foot. I mean, that was a foot and a half. Uh, that was that I was mean, that was the one that was going to kind of like a like a half a subwoofer size. Yeah, that was my that was that was designed to be there. And so she moved. Yeah, and it. you had it backed up, like facing towards the kitchen, and the, it was the shit. Yeah, I had. It, oh, but you have a big sound, like a six foot sound bar in there or something too, like a four foot sound bar. That's for surround sound. That's different. Oh, that won't play the music? It will. <laughs> okay. So what's it, what's the difference? It's not as... You know uh, I have a sound bar, and I, I've used that thing once or twice a year. Really? On my TV, yeah. I, my TV doesn't even... The speakers don't even play ever. Wow. Always through a sound bar. Do you want another sound bar? No. Because <laughs> I just retired a sound bar. I have nowhere for it to go. <laughs> I can give you a sound bar, and it's actually pretty good. I give you a subwoofer, shake your whole damn house. That I would like a sub. That'd be nice to have. Do you have an app that'll run a sub? Do you have a receiver? In my Yeah, in my shed, but I don't like, not for the TV. Dude, I can make your whole house shake. Yeah. I'm sure you could. I can't afford it. No, you can have it. <laughs> like, it's literally sitting next to the new sub. Yeah, but... Does that does that sub if it needs an amp to be powered like how would it run through your TV? I can give you a sound bar that has a, a sub output. Oh, my, I wonder right if my sound bar has a sub output. It might. You should take this sub because it's beautiful, and I feel really bad that it's sitting back there just collecting dust now. Nice. It'll shake the whole damn house. I know this because. It used to be it that sh- used to shake your house every week. My wife would say, "Could you turn down the damn sub?" I'm like, "Maybe." It's like we're not even in the war. That's what I'm. All right, <laughs> you mock, but that is the beauty of it. Yeah, like, you know a tank's coming long before yep. you see it, and I like that for sure. But yeah, so I spent way too much money. So now it's the Sonos to go with the Yeti to go with the damn solo stoves. Solo stoves. It's it's problematic. Well, and this one put me in debt to a point that, like, I had to divide it amongst credit cards. Ooh. I had to place one order through Best Buy. Why didn't you just break it up? Like, you didn't have to buy them all at the same time. Yep, I know. <laughs> but I didn't want to not have, like, the completed package. I mean, I get that. I get that. Like, I was upgrading everything. I, was, yeah. like, I just wanted to do the upgrade. But yeah, no, clearly it's like I had to divide it out. And now I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I just got, I just got paid on Friday. Big old credit card payment. <laughs> Never saw that paycheck. And it still didn't, it just, it's putting little dents in, in but it was yeah. like, it was like, 
that's got to go. That's got to go. That's got to go. Like, like send them all off. That's, that's the game we're playing right now. The Ugh. payment game. So everything wow. is just to listen to music, just to listen to music. And I already could listen to music. <laughs> that's the worst part, you know? Yeah. You did show it to me about a week ago. And, uh, it was funny because we had a friend over here that was like, check out what I can do. And he literally just played a song on his iPhone and walked around the yard going, listen, I can have music follow me wherever I go to for free. Not at the same quality. <laughs> Not at the same quality. Oh, and here's the worst part. So I'm an Android guy. We know that, right? Yeah. Diehard Android guy. Diehard. Because Apple go fuck themselves. I hate yeah. that they make you live in that ecosystem. Total bullshit. But, but turns out that Google and Sonos gotten quite the fight. Oh, really? Over some patent technology. And so Sonos only plays. That's where with, that's my argument about the anti Apple people is like you still live in your own world. Like you're going with Google, you know, like, yeah, you can do other. But like. I mean, it, there's no denying that that Android is more open source than Apple. Yeah. In the sense that, like, they just go, here's the operating system, and anyone can tweak it how they yeah. want and do their thing. Yeah. Because Apple's like, you absolutely cannot. Until you need to use something on their operating system. Which is problematic. Yeah. So, turns out that, that Android or Google and Sonos got in a fight about how this Wi-Fi technology works, and they've been going back and forth for a long time. Now, because of this... Sonos is kind of like, look, you guys are being dicks. Like, we literally came out with the tech, and then you came out with the tech, and now we're having to sue you, and you've got more money than God. Is there a Google version of the Sonos system? It was the old uh, Chromecast audio and all of that. They uh, built okay. that on the back of what Sonos had done, and so they're like, this is bullshit. Like, you you are trying to take our take our stuff. Now, what Sonos has said is that, because of the variations and all the people who are allowed to use Android, we can't trust the microphones in Android phones, but we can trust the microphones in Apple phones because they're completely buttoned up. Now, this is probably somewhat true, but also bullshit because they're like, hey, screw you. We're in a legal battle, so we're not going to give you all the, all the bells and whistles. Yeah. Understandably. Yeah. So Sonos has the ability to your phone to hear the, hear the music in the room and go... Hey, we should adjust the bass down a little. We should tweak the treble. We should allow this one to do this. Too. So wow. So it so the, it, it'll adjust for acoustics of the space. Exactly. But what if you're bebopping around to your five different rooms with it? So basically, you can walk in a room with an Apple device and go test my speakers, and you walk to every corner of that room, and your Apple device listens to it, and Sonos goes. But wouldn't that change for each song? No, it's a test tones. I know, but like. Each song has different levels of treble, bass, mid, like... So they're basically deciding... They're finding a middle ground. They're, they're finding averaging. the perfect, the average, like, if everything's normal, this is the perfect amount yeah. of everything that we should have. So the speaker is dialed in perfectly to the room Yeah, it's in. And he can only do that with Apple. So now I'm like, this is bullshit. I need an Apple phone. Yeah, you do. So I'm actually... I think it's called an iPhone, but I'm, I'm not real tech guy. Nobody knows. <laughs> So Steve Jobs, that went to the grave with him, what they, what we call it. I'm taking it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm about to just completely jump ship because I want my Sonos to be dialed in perfectly. I mean. That on top of the fact that my kids now have iPhones, like, and like, I can't do certain things because of the way the shitty technology is with iPhones being so buttoned up and proprietary. Like they FaceTime each other and I can't. Yeah. That annoys me. But that's a good thing. It's good for people with Apple, but I hate that kind of, you know, elitist nonsense. I mean, I understand it, but that's what car companies do. You know, like they have. Companies have been doing this since the dawn of time. It doesn't yeah. mean I have to like it. Exactly. I like but the like, concept. For of what Android. you spend on your speakers, you'd be silly not to get an iPhone so you could like. I want the best. Max potential. Like. Unfortunately, I agree. So what do I have to do now? I have to buy the next most expensive damn thing. iPhones are not cheap. They'll give them to you. I'm not signing a contract. I still won't do that. Okay. I'm a, I, I'm weird like that. Yeah. I'd rather be like, oh, if the new one comes out and all of a sudden it's got tits, like I want to be able to upgrade and get the tits. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I don't buy, I buy them outright too. So I'm with you. But like when I went, when we went to get my son, his phone last year, 
I was like, you know, should, should we get this and this? And she's like, we'll give you an iPhone 12 and it, you can get all the parental settings you want on it, but there's no need to, uh, there's no need just to get like the flip phone. We were going to get them a flip phone. So they gave us an iPhone and I mean, we signed the contract for him, but yeah, but he's not going anywhere yeah. and let, you know what I mean? So like you can kind of get yeah. away with that. I just like the idea of like, I don't want to have, if something really better comes out, but I want to be trade able to trade it in. Phone and you'll get a good amount to put towards it. That's the worst part. If I trade in my current like Google Pixel, right now they're selling the the top of the line Google Pixel for like five hundred bucks. Yeah, and I can trade in mine for like two fifty. So it's like I would get a two hundred fifty dollar phone, but since I have a Google, Apple's like I don't really care about your phone. Yeah, they'll but give me you like go to Verizon bucks. or something. Yeah, they give me a little. Yeah. But it's like once you get in the ecosystem, then you can always upgrade and trade it in and yeah. kind of work the system. They do that intentionally. Yeah. They want to keep oh, yeah. you in their system. We'll see how it goes, but I got a funny feeling that the Sonos is now going to back me into an iPhone, too. There you go. I'm falling apart, man. <laughs> falling apart. Just put it on your credit card. You'll be fine. The debt is becoming astronomical. <laughs> I feel like Ely. That's how you live, though. No. I usually do, like, I, I kind of save up and I buy these things. And, uh -huh. like, I do spend too much, but, like, I kind of live within my means. But if it's I'm, not debt. If I'm being fully honest right now, I'm a little out over my skis. Yeah. Credit card-wise, because, like, we've been doing, like, the trips and, like, I'm yeah. doing things. And now, all of a sudden, I'm buying things that I want. And I'm kind of, like, I was looking at my credit cards the other day and I was like, oh, boy. Like, they're all starting to kind of pile up. Yeah, Ely's on another Disney adventure. This yeah. time a cruise. Ely's the biggest debt having guy I know. But is he? See, I don't know. I don't oh, know. no, it's ludicrous. I've never asked him if it's debt. I know he spends a lot of money, but I never know if it's debt. He carries a lot of debt, but he also seems to somehow find ways to buy things that end up Making working money. out. <laughs> yeah. So, like, he does all right. I don't get rid of the things that I buy. Yeah. He's like, I'll flip them to get to the next thing. So he's like more of a flipper. So he carries debt he does for a flip little a lot while, of stuff, yeah. Flips it, puts that money towards the next debt. Yeah. And he's constantly doing that. Whereas I'm like, all right, I bought that debt and I just keep it and then just watch it depreciate. And I'm like, cool. Yeah, well, that's the point. Like, if I like something enough to buy it, I want it. That means I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. I'm the opposite of the whole rich dad, poor dad. Even my philosophy. Jeep, like, if somebody were to offer me more money than I paid for my Jeep right now, I'd be like, no, I want my Jeep. Like, I've been waiting 30 years. Like, I'm going to have a damn Jeep. That's the problem. Yeah. That's problematic. No, Or is it? Because then I'm not... But that means I'm not just buying rando big ticket items. Whereas Ely would buy that Jeep. And if he got an opportunity to make $1,000 on it, flip that Jeep. But what's the dollars But then he'd go buy the new Jeep. He'd yeah. accrue more debt. Exactly. And then he'd wait for the next thing to happen. But that's... Look, it's different. Look, it's, it's all American well, problems. They do say the wealthy, like... Aren't scared to have debt. Well, then look how rich I'm getting. <laughs> I'm officially filthy rich. That's right. I am just accruing some. Well, debt. last week you told us about all your winnings, so you should be golden now. Well, if you read the write up, it said I was rich for a week. <laughs> I did read the. <laughs> and I am no longer rich. I have got I've got some debt, but I've got a plan, and that plan's real easy. Don't buy shit. Pay off the debt. Move forward. That is the key. Listen That's to music. That's yeah. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm Free gonna, music. I'm gonna keep paying the debts, listening to music, and then as soon as I get out of this debt, I'm gonna go find some fresh debt. How does it work when you're home? Because I know you. You want to play it on all the speakers. Yes. But like you listen to some stuff that you probably don't want your family listening to. I change it up. Okay. Let me. You know, I can dial in whatever. My wife came in yesterday and she was like, if I have to listen to any more of this slow shit, I'm going to kill myself. And I was like, <laughs> I'll change it. I'll change it. And I went to something a little more uh, but a little more fun. Do you keep all of them on it all the time? You can actually play a different song on every speaker. I know, house. but like, why w if you're out here, why would you su subject them into the house? Oh, I certainly don't. Oh, okay, okay. No, the music is playing where I am. Okay. That's No, no. Unless I'm home alone. But your house also isn't big enough to where, like, it stays in one room. Like, if you play it at a decent volume, it's going to bleed to other rooms. That's the beauty of it. Everything doesn't have to be loud. Yeah. Like, when, when you have a speaker in every room, you can actually keep the volume very low. So, like, you could have a conversation. Okay. But the music is everywhere at about the same volume. Yeah. And that's, 
That's what I like. Like, because usually you're right. You just pump music. Yeah. So then there's a corner of the house that's deafening. Yeah. But you can still hear it in the other end. Yeah. Now everywhere is conversational. Nice. Music. I like that. Okay. Like, that's a really nice feeling. While you're like break, making breakfast or like yeah. working around the house or Everywhere whatever. Everywhere you go, it sounds the same volume. And that volume is a nice, agreeable volume. Nice. And it's crystal clear sound. Cool. I dig it. It's just, it's not worth it. And. But you say it is worth it. It is, but here's why. I <laughs> so I bought these damn things. And then like three days later, because now, you know, the uh, everything in my phone knows that I'm interested in them. So it's oh, giving me yeah. all the updates. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so they have just filed with the FCC and they've, they've shown their patents and all their stuff that's coming out. And they've made sure that they have got the regulation, everything to go for their new speakers that are coming out in the next like two months. The Eros line, top of Uh-oh. the line. All the speakers that I have are about to be like the old shit. Today, they're the new shit. But in about two months, they're going to be the old shit. Then what are you going to do? Upgrade everything. No, you're not. More debt. No, I'm probably not. <laughs> no, no, I'm very pleased with what I have. But like, it's going to break my heart. But what sucks is no matter what, at this point, you're humped because if you'd waited a couple months... You could have gotten what you have now for less, so that kind of cuts. Well, so I, they were on sale. Oh, Everything they, they was were, on sale, and they, they were, were like, starting to discount it. And everybody was like, "Nothing. These never go on sale. This is crazy." Uh, and I was like, "I know what that means." Yeah. So I knew what was coming. And then, sure enough, about a week later, yeah, it's like there it is. So in in a few months, they they will be the older speakers. But I did get a discount. Now it won't be as steep, probably as. Then, yeah, once it releases. Yeah, but I was still happy to be like, all right, I'm saving hundreds of bucks here. Yeah. So, eh. <laughs> Say la vie. What are you going to do? Speaking of new shit, I am more excited about this. Is it time? This. I know you're geeked up. I'm very excited. I've been pre-gaming, I've been pre-gaming since about 3 o'clock for this, and it's now 9.30. All right. Six and a half hours of beers in me just waiting for this moment. Should we get it out? We are about to try the new fat tire and the old fat tire. Now, there is a marker, Troy, because we're going to blind taste test these. Yeah, we were going to blind taste test it three ways. Yeah, that's not how it worked. Because Stu's not here. Now, now, granted, I think, I believe his, uh, one of his kids is pretty sick, vomiting everywhere. His kids? His, yeah. I thought it was him. No, no, no. He's taking care of, like, norovirus in the house. Now, if I'm being honest, I don't want norovirus in this house. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan myself. It's pretty gross shit. Like, you ever had the norovirus? That's where you... Uh, Puking shit, shit puke. everywhere? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's pretty awful. Yeah, the, actually, in the 15... No. Wife and I've been we've been married almost sixteen years, so we've been together eighteen years. I've been sick twice. Once was with the flu, and once was what I assume is the norovirus, it's where the worst. I was puking and shitting nonstop. Yeah, for about twenty four, thirty six hours. Yeah, just- and it was at one point it was the middle of the night, and my son had just been born, and she found me like curled up in the fetal position in the bathroom, out. Yeah. And, like, she had to get the baby up and drive me just across the street to the hospital. And uh, they just, all they did was put two bags of saline in me and monitor me for, like, There's not six much hours. they can do. They're like, all right, well, this dude's on the brink of death, but yeah. some fluids and, you know, we got a fighting chance. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fine if Stu doesn't want to come over tonight, even though I'd and like to. And it's highly contagious, right? It's about the most contagious thing in the world. Nobody in my house got it, but I had it. Yeah, I went to my parents' house when they had it, and I was there. I think I'd seen him for like six hours, and then I went out that night. Oh, and no. And I was like, I'm not feeling well. And it was like, it was that quick. No. Yeah, it's it's fast. All right, let's get these fat tires out. Oh, you've already got them out. Recap. What are we doing here? So we are going to blind taste test the new fat tire and the old fat tire. Now, I know what you're saying. They just changed the logo. And you would think that's the case because that's what any normal company would do. Yeah. But that's not what they did here. They actually changed the recipe on Fat Tire. Not only did they change the logo, 
But they changed the damn recipe. Of one of the most iconic beers of all time. Now, they said it's going to taste pretty much the same, but they intentionally made it lighter, more refreshing so that the millennial audience likes it because they're losing market share. And so they're trying to kind of recapture. I would assume well. everyone's losing market share across all beer brands because there is never new beer not coming out. All right, Troy, I'm going to ask you to turn your yep, head. I'm going to turn Just around. a moment. Just a moment. I'm going to close my eyes. I'll keep talking while you're okay, actually there you pouring. Okay, there so, you go. There you go. You are writing one and two on a cup and pouring your version of that, and I'm doing the same thing. And then you're going to hand me your cups, and I'm going to hand you my cups, right? Yeah, that's exactly how this okay. is going to go down. So we're going to blind taste test, give our thoughts on both, pick our favorites, and then discuss is what I think we're doing. And it would have been nice to have a third or a fourth, but... Again, it's just you and me. Can I open my eyes? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think this has kind of worked itself out. So here you go. Two beers, my friend. Well, I got to pour yours. That's fine. That's fine. So I have a theory, too. So now you close I have, your I've, eyes. I've closed my eyes. So the one, some of the things that I've noticed about this, and it's kind of breaking my heart. You know, they have always I'm going to pour the rest of these in here because yeah, you're going to drink them. Wish a motherfucker would. So... The Fat Tire logo itself has always been quite iconic. You know, they've got that that dope-ass beach cruiser. In fact, I think a big part of my love for beach cruisers and why I've really embraced them so much is because partly Fat Tire. I remember the first time you I had a Fat Tire, I was out in, like, I was out in Arizona, and I was sitting around a bonfire, and someone handed me a Fat Tire, and I thought, oh, my gosh, this is, like, about the perfect beer. And then I couldn't get it on the East Coast. You know, it didn't it, at that yeah. time. It didn't exist, and so I coveted Fat Tire in a way that other Our beers pours were not very good. You might want to let those settle. Yeah, I got the same problem with them as I made you. So it became one of these beers that, like, I I coveted on so many levels. Like, I just wanted to get my hands on it. I couldn't get. It. I remember when it rolled into Chicago. I remember buying the inaugural bottles, and it had like snow on the ground and everything, and I was like so excited and drank got got a bottle of that. I remember when it came into South Carolina, I was there and I went and bought some 22s of that. Had the palmetto trees in the background, the logo. Like, I remember when it came into Virginia and like, I just, I, I kept all these. Like, this has always been one of my absolute favorites. Wasn't it beers. leaning against the barn or something? Yeah. Yeah. For Virginia. Oh, they, I didn't know they were different. Yeah. Every state, they did something like iconic to the state when they got ah. into it. And they always had that like beach cruiser motor or bicycle yeah. on there. And it was just such With a beautiful fat tires. Bike. Yeah. Which, so then I started kind of making beach cruisers cause I'd fallen in love with them and I dug it. I think that bike is about perfect. The new Belgian fat tire bike on the old logo, this new logo, they have a damn fixie on there. Yeah. Which they're not fat tires bikes no it's an it's an angular frame it's a it's a it's just a basic road bike which is not the swooping beautiful bike that was the fat tire which i i find i find upsetting right from the jump they're both 5.2 oh they're like they said it's the same beer but i don't i don't know that it is my buddy, my buddy Shell said that he actually prefers the new one. Really? Yeah. Is he known for making poor decisions? He listens to the podcast. So, yes. I mean, take that how you want. <laughs> but he said he and his dad had it and that uh, his dad preferred the old flavor. So the old guy liked the old flavor and the young guy. I'm kind of worried they're not the going to be that different. I think they're probably, I mean, look, if they did it right, they should be. Very close, but if it's if this is the false flag operation that you say it is, yeah, where they're like they're pulling a new coke, yeah, and they're gonna put one out there that's not gonna be good, and then we come back and you know everybody rallies and says we don't like this, and then they change it back, and then sales go up, then that's genius. Can you see? Uh, can you see into your cup yet? Or is this so foamy? Sorry, dude, I tried, but now I can see also- into one of them. I was trying to uh, pour quickly so you didn't have to say no with your eyes closed too long. Do you want to see in the mine? No, because I know what yours are. Oh. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. I can tell you, this one smells like fat tire to me. 
Whichever one this one. Whichever one you have labeled with a two. Smells like fat tire to me. Actually, soda's one. Yeah, they kind of <laughs> smell similar. Now, truth be told, I do love fat tire. Don't recall the last one I had. Um, I didn't seek it out. I didn't seek out a lot of uh, microbrews. Because we're always trying new stuff. That's basically the microbrews I was drinking was... The uh, newer stuff that we're always trying, but normally I just drink Miller or Coors Light, you know. So, <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> it's gonna be hard to tell, isn't it? It's it's more difficult than it should be. Well, no, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it's not actually. I feel like I need like water between the two, you know. Get the taste out. Okay. I can tell you this. Two sips in, I'm fairly confident that you poured the original fat tire in the two and the new fat tire in the one. One sip in, I feel that you did the exact same thing. Okay. I feel that you have the original in the two and the new in the one. Okay. So. Very interesting. Huh. <laughs> I can tell you this. I don't hate either one of them. Like they're, yeah. they're 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 both they're both there, but I can tell you Fat Tire original was a 4 to me. Yeah. And this is kind of dancing in the 4 range for both of them, so it's not really not really that wildly different. They're not that wildly different, but one tastes like a lighter version of the other. To me. Yeah, but they're so close. They they didn't tweak this formula very fucking much. One one tastes more flavorful to me. And when I say one, not the number one. One of them tastes more flavorful. The other tastes like a watered down version of the the more flavorful one. That's my opinion. I think I might like the new one. You don't know which one's the new one. Yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah. It's this one. What you just held up they're all blue cups. Yeah. Okay. That one's the new one. All right. <laughs> they're uh oh. I've been drinking too long today because now that I'm like chugging these, it's everything's going. I'm browning out. Yeah, it's got like a like a muddy, malty nuttiness. Yep. Ooh, I might actually be changing my opinion on which ones. You know, they obviously haven't changed it, but so much. I got my favorite, and I got my pick of which one I think is the original. I might be changing my whole, I might be flipping my whole thing. Do you want me to go first? Well, I certainly can't. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to, if I would put. Either of them at the four, but definitely one. the one I picked as a favorite is a three and a half to four range. The second one would be a half point below whatever that is. Ooh, interesting. See, there's a half point difference in these beers to you. Well, they're not the same, so I can't give them the same. Like, one is more full flavored, more going on, and one's more of a light beer version of it to me. So, I'm not going to give them... This, I'm not going to score them the same. You think they could be scored the same? Is I what? think it's. I think the difference is so slight that yes, I do. I think you could score them the same because I'm actually preferring the one that I think is the lighter version. I actually might be a new fat tire guy. Oh, okay. If I'm uh, if I'm picking the right one, otherwise. I'm just the same old fat guy. <laughs> well, what I don't like 
back to the to the packaging. I hate the packaging. I really hate do. The new packaging. The old packaging had that deep dark blue and deep red, symmetrical, just you know, just beautiful color scheme with the cream, you know, instead of white on the logo and the red bike, the beach cruiser. Just beautiful, iconic. New one is weird with the fixed gear on it. Not the same. I mean, everyone that knows bikes knows fat fixed gears aren't fat tires. No, they actually have skinny tires. Skinnier they're for the than road. Every other, other every other bike. They're like Tour de France bikes. Yeah, but the, I mean, the picture has a fatter tire on it, but it doesn't make sense. Which is hilarious that they just made the tire thicker, but up and down, not yes. width, yes. height. Which is not what a fat tire is. No. I don't know if they know this, but the no. fat tire has to do with the width. And Schmucks. if you remember correctly, last week, the box and all this is all the hippy-dippy eco shit. They're all they're talking about. It's is all it? they talk about. Yeah. How it's, it's like, what the box Carbon say? neutral. Yeah, carbon neutrals all over. And it's like, I get it. You can't be against But that. they are. They are the first... Carbon neutral brewery. Oh, are they? Yeah. That's their claim to fame? Yeah. They even produced a beer last year that was all of the like barley and hops and everything that could grow after global warming. Like they're like, if it moves this much, all these will die, but these are the varieties that are left. And they're like, this is the best beer you can have. And it was like intentionally kind of shitty. Uh for, okay. For them. Oh, that's kind of dicky. No, but it was kind of funny. They're like, if we don't change the world, this is the best beer you can have. Because these are the only varieties that live. But that's not, that might not be true. I understand that. But they're doing this whole, you know, save the earth hippie thing. It's employee owned. It's carbon neutral. It's, it's, that's what they're doing. I mean, it's fully solar powered. It's a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy setup they have. It's legit. I mean, they're not, they're not faking. But I don't think people buy beer for that. I, I think some do. I don't think enough to change your the, your economics. The people they're going after with the fixie, and the, maybe they might. Do you maybe. know what I mean? No, they're they're changing who they are. It's it, this is a this is the beginning of a wholesale change. I mean, they are. That's what they're hoping. I just don't yeah. think it'll be the swing that they think it'll be. Yeah, it's like doing a threesome with your girlfriend. Yeah, you think it's going to be dope, but yeah. then all of a sudden there's a lot of fucking bullshit yep. that comes along with it, and nobody's happy. There's a lot of guilt, a lot yeah. of arguing. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of things, you know. Like, hey, how about you don't? The old, uh, are you down for a threesome? Yeah, and then another dude shows up, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, I didn't <laughs> say the devil's threesome. <laughs> I wanted more titty. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of nuts. Yeah. We were all f- we were all good on uh, male genitalia. <laughs> yeah, we already had. We had that quota. I already brought it. <laughs> yeah. Nope. All right. Do you want me to do you want me to guess? Like, how, how do you want to do the reveal here? I just want you to rate which your, your scores of the two beers. All right, I'll go three and a half on number two. On number two. And a three on number one. A three on number one. And I think number two is the original. Okay. Is any of that right? Well, I guess only one thing could be right or wrong. Yeah. All right, so run it back. Three and a half on your two and three on the one. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, you are a new fat tire guy. Really? You're a three and a half on the new fat tire. Wow. One was the original. Two seem two. two seem like so much more flavor. Two was the new one. I went real easy on my me- my metric. I was like one was the first. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was how I was working through it. Um, so I can tell you both of the. I actually like both of these. I don't. I don't actually dislike either. Like I really like these. Well, I I like both of them. I just ranked one higher because to me it's like. One's the new one and one's the old one, so you got to pick. You can't have a tie. No, here's all right. Here's what I can tell you. I, that's my thinking. You can obviously have a tie if you want. I'm going to give them a tie because I think they're both fours. I okay. really do like them. But I can tell you this: this is strange to me. This one, which is one, 
Oof. One, huh? Okay. It goes against my logic of what you were doing. I actually think one is more drinkable. Uh huh. I think they're both fours. Okay. I like this beer. Okay. Because they're very similar. They're very similar. Yeah. The only difference being is that this one. I don't think you'd tell them apart. Maybe if you weren't drinking them back to back. I think there's there's a there's more nuttiness in two. Yeah. And and I think over time maybe I wouldn't want that nuttiness, and that's why it actually leads me to believe that one is the new one. And two is the original. Mm-hmm. It's just my my logic from what you've done, but I don't I don't know that. But I actually like uh, one one better. But again, I, I like them both a lot. So fours for me. What? So how how close am I? One is the new one. Yeah, and it's, two is the old one. But you don't think two has more flavor than one? No, two does. I said oh, it's okay. more nutty. But you thought? I just think one's more drinkable. So my two, I thought, had more flavor. But you actually chose the new one. No, that's the one I chose, too. I know. You chose the new flavor one. But you, th- you thought that had more flavor. Yeah, but you don't think No, I has- think I think one is as, as a lighter flavor. I think... I'm all confused again now. I think the original is a little more nutty. Like, it's just like a malt. That's not how it tasted to me. To me, it was, it was a little more nutty, a little to more To me, the malty. new one had more malt and flavor in it. The yeah. one was lighter. I thought this was more subdued, the new one, just ever so slightly. Again, we're splitting hairs here. But I actually like how drinkable the new one is because it isn't as nutty forward, which would allow me to put down more of them. See, so I, I like what the, they've done. I would say the old one's more drinkable. If I were to drink multiples, I would want one. Yeah, I can taste this like aftertaste of nuttiness, maltiness in the two. I that. think I think we messed up somewhere because you and I are really agree- saying the exact same thing, but we're saying it differently. I'm pretty confident. Well, I know what I poured for you. I know what I poured for you. The old one went in two. Yeah. But you're saying one has more nuttiness in it. No, no, no. The old one, two, <laughs> is more nutty, more flavorful. The new one is a little bit lighter. I know, but I'm saying the opposite. Then I know, I'm no, the you're, opposite. Yeah, no, you're saying the exact opposite thing of me. Huh. But I'm agreeing with what they said they were going to do, and that's why I was like, nope, I can tell this one is more nutty. And like, Thank you. I'm, and you're saying it's just, you're like, no. It's I'm different. saying this one is way lighter. Yeah, the fat tire one. That should be cup one. That's the original. Yeah. No, you said two was the original. No, one's the original. One was first. I'm saying one is way lighter. I'm saying the new is way lighter than the... No, your cup one is the original. Yeah. Your cup two is the new one. Yes. But I'm saying two has more... I know. You're disagreeing with my flavor yeah, profile. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But they're that close. That's what I'm saying. I think it's entirely possible that we could have different opinions saying the same thing because the beers are that close. Like there were time, there was a moment in time, right, somewhere in between my second and third sip, where I completely changed my opinion. Because yeah, it was something about the way when the first sip went in, I was like, okay, this one's lighter, this one's this one's darker. And then as I was drinking them, I was like, yo, I can't even tell the difference. And it's something about there's a there's an aroma. That they've basically recreated aroma and not flavor to make uh-huh. it feel like it's nutty. And since you're actually not swallowing right now, that could be exactly what that is. Because they've yeah. created the aroma of the nuttiness without the flavor of it. So if mostly you're getting mouthfeel and nose, it wouldn't surprise me. Because they've kind of punched that up to do it without making it I have, feel it. I have thought since I stopped ingesting everything if it does change i believe this is a perfect example of that yeah because they when i was nose when i was smelling it i was like yo they kind of smell the same yeah and then i noticed later on that like the new one really was playing up stink not flavor and i was like that's a that's an interesting take but it's, it's the equivalent of dry hopping a beer yeah where it smells more hoppy than it is flavorful and i wonder if they played up they might have done that the you're stink. saying they did that on purpose yeah so that you because when you when you're drinking it and you're swallowing it you're going that is a lighter beer 
Okay. You can tell it's a lighter beer going in because the other one is like thicker almost. Okay. Right? But the flavor on the nose, I was confused on the smell because I was like, okay, this one's a little nuttier. And that's what was flipping me. But then I was like, nope, when I'm drinking it, I know this is a lighter beer. But I was getting the flavor more nose and mouthfeel gotcha. than I was in in it, I think they I think they intentionally did that to make a I th- lighter beer. I think beer you're right. That so they basically just dry malted it at yeah. the end. I wouldn't be shocked if that's exactly what they did because they're that similar. Yeah. But when you're drinking it, it goes down easier over time. Yeah. As a man who just put down two beers. <laughs> <laughs> I take your word. Yeah. Hey, can I um get a fresh fat tire? A, a, a new a new fat new tire. New one, yeah. I just want to do a whole. I'm going to put one down. I'm going to put one down on account of I, tomorrow. I have to go to work in 28 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and. I hate this label. Yeah, it's. But now I'm going to get to try it right out of here. Yeah, it's wild. Tastes different than the out of the plastic cup with the bad pour. It's even lighter out of the bottle. You smell it? Yeah. It's nutty, right? Yeah. Like it's it smells red. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it doesn't pour red. No. Yeah, they both look similar. They looked a lot more similar than they there's they, they lightening it, and I was like looking at them. I was yeah. Like, nah. So I think Fat Tire actually hasn't completely fucked up here. Because the fact that the two of us danced in different directions, that's how close they are. But why not keep the original and just spin it off? It's stupid. That's what I don't get. Maybe because they, I don't know. You should have fat tire and then you should have like. Little fat tire. Little fat tire. Yeah. It's foolish what they've done. I mean, New Belgium makes a lot of good beers, but Fat Tire has been that backbone the entire time. And to change the backbone, you're changing who you are, and maybe that's the point. They're trying to, and maybe that is maybe that is the whole point. Like, now we're carbon neutral. Now we're all this. Maybe all their beers are going to go that route? I can tell you, as I'm drinking this one right now, it's, it's still nutty and malty. It's like as out of the bottle. It's still a good beer, but it is... Somehow, lighter going down the gullet, not any lighter in the scent, if not. I wonder if they like artificial the scent up. It's almost like my breath has more of it in my mouth. Yeah. That's when I could really tell was on the exhale. I felt I tasted all that flavor on the exhale and then sinuses more than on the palate because I wasn't ingesting it all the way in. plays into the whole we've bumped up the stink yeah cut down on the weight yeah it's an interesting i don't hate it i hate the label fuck i hate the label yeah bring the label back keep this beer in the bottle and i think we'll be okay that's what i think again th- there's other options and they make some cool names and cool logos but too, both but of like... us effectively said we like the new one yeah like we both which we kind of thought we were i mean we didn't we didn't think it'd be i thought i was gonna hate it I actually like that it's it's a little more drinkable. It's actually pretty good. And you said you preferred that one over the other. So yeah. we both actually chose the new one. So I don't well, hate I, Fat I, Tire. I said I preferred it over the other one as one had to win, but I wouldn't spit either out at no, all. No, I gave like, them both fours, but if I was going to give the nod, I'm going to give it to the new one. It's somehow better. Those fuckers. You know why, though? Because I'm a millennial. I'm young. <laughs> they made this for you. Yeah, I fell right into the trap. Yep, you did. They were like, hey, we're like, hey, hey, young guy. Hey, classic millennial. You're going to like this so much more. And I'm like, you're right. Well, I'm curious. Do you know anyone who's had it? I'm curious. To Just see. Shell. I'm curious. And he said he liked it. He likes the new one. His dad liked the old one. So I'm curious to see if any other listeners reach out and let us know. Actually, that would be good. I'd like people to let us know if they've had an opportunity to have the two side by side. And I know this is accurate because when I went into Total Wine, that was the last Fat Tire old, original. Yeah. And the first Fat Tire News. So I'm like, these are literally the two freshest yeah. you can get. That's why I wanted more guys to be here. I agree. 
So, well, we're working on getting a new standard third. Yeah, is that really going to happen, you think? Uh, he reached out, and I think the fans would love to have him. So, I'll reach out and see if we can get him on the next episode. Here we go. You know what we're going to do for him? What? Borgs. <laughs> Borgs. We're going to Borg with him. God, I'm, as someone who doesn't drink, kind of interested to try the Borg. You, are not, you would not want a Borg. If I was still drinking, I would most definitely want to do a Borg. Oh, no. Someone <laughs> peed in my pants. That's a Borg. But is it? Because I read the article, and it sounds like you've done right. A Borg is a... It's a hydration thing, too. Okay, for those that don't know what a Borg is... Borg's an acronym. B-O-R-G. Oh, what's it stand for? Uh, black Outrage Gallon? <laughs> <laughs> Is that, that's what it is, right? No. Now that you say it, yep. That's 100% what a Borg is. What is it? Yep. I thought it was. No, it's a black outrage gallon. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Borg. I, no, no, I, that I, is beautiful. It makes perfect sense. Did you not know that? No. Oh, I thought you... No, I that thought, is what a Borg is. Yeah. I'm certain of it 100%. Because yeah. I've, heard, I've heard things around that, so now that you're saying it, I'm like, yeah. oh, I get it. Borg. Speaking of millennials, this is a millennial thing. Yes. Yeah. And so I had seen the equivalent of this. So don't worry. We're going to tell you what a Borg is. We're not just going to talk about them willy-nilly. So how about those uh, commanders? Dude, right? <laughs> Man. Shoot off on another yeah, topic. Exactly. Oh, I get Everybody's it. Everybody's Googling Borg. Oh, we'll just stew this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're stewed, but why? <laughs> no. So a, a Borg is obviously a blackout rage gallon. Yeah. Basically, you take a gallon. Like a milk jug gallon. Yeah. Like a, a clear uh, milk jug. Yep. You fill it half with vodka. That's what college kids are doing. Yeah. You fill it half with vodka. That's a lot of vodka. Well, it's only half a gallon. Yeah. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> when you say it out loud. <laughs> I mean, that can't be right. You can't drink that much. That is a, I'd like the, like a mini Borg. I think it's an all night thing. You can't drink half a gallon of vodka. Yeah, you can. A half a gallon is yeah. the giant jug of vodka. Yeah, you can drink it. Well, no, you can't. That's true. You can't. That would be a lot. Even in my, even when I was drinking a lot, like no, that's a lot. A gal, like a half gallon. I'm gonna look up a Borg recipe. I'm pretty sure the article said it was half gallon of water, half gallon of vodka, and then you mix in some. Uh, Liquid IVs or hydration packs to give it flavor and color and all that stuff. Do you have the article that I sent in? Because I read it like two weeks ago. Okay, it says a fifth. So that's not a half gallon. Thank God. Yeah. So there's more water in there than than alcohol. Yeah. So you are hydrating as you... And it also says like the electrolyte packs and all that stuff. You are correct. It is a blackout rage gallon is what it stands for. Well, I mean, that makes sense. Yes, of course. So which, what's when you Google it, what's the recipe? It looks like most people would put a fifth in there. Okay. And then there's many a different... Yeah, the, and you can cut... It's fully customizable. Yeah, so all right, just to give you the, the, the quick of it. You take a gallon, you pour a fifth in there, and then you pour, you obviously have water, but then you put some liquid IV in there so that you're really getting the good hydration. Now, the liquid IV flavor that you choose is obviously going to dictate the flavor of the, of the drink. And then if you want to do something a little more fancy with it, you can put, you can put some other, other elements in there. But this is basically a Borg. You're walking around with a gallon that's a fifth of vodka and then hydration. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the simple recipe. Yeah. Now, I have multiple recipes here. Well, you know what's big in the Borg world, right? Because you're carrying around this thing for a night. Well, oh, yeah. Well, you don't yeah. want to mix your Borg up if you sit it down, right? right? No, but you know, you know what else you, know, what else you put in there, though? What? It's a little bit of like an energy drink, like a Celsius. Oh, yeah, like a monster? So it's a liquid IV. So you want to be up and down. Yeah. That's the that's the move. And hydrated. Yeah. So you need the liquid IV, the water, a little energy drink, and then a shit ton of vodka, and you just walk around with your gallon. But what, what were you saying about putting it down? 
So you have to customize your Borg because if you're at a party and there's a hundred people with Borgs. It's like I draw a face on it or something. You well, mean, you or? name it. I name my Borg? You name your Borg. Oh, like Cyborg. There you go. So. SI though, because I'm making it cool. There you go. Yeah. Or PSY. Ooh. Greek. So here's some here's some popular Borg names. Borgasm. All a Borg. Ruth Bader Ginsborg. Oh, so you make that one with Jin? Yeah. Uh, Andy Samborg. Our Borg and Savior. Justin B. Borg. Borg and Donor. <laughs> Five Guys Borgers and Fries. Heisenborg. Borg and Freeman. Heisenborg has to be blue. Yeah. Right? You got to put like the, the Asahi. Spongeborg. Oh, my God. Uh, Greta Thunborg. Mm, that make it could make you autistic. <laughs> I think any of them will, but I mean, can you imagine? The Greta Thunborg gets warmer as the night yeah. goes on. <laughs> well, aren't they all? Because you're not icing them, so they're all no. going to be like room temperature, which is gross. I hate drinking room temperature anything. So this this Borg here, there's there's a tropical Borg where you use the tropical vibe Celsius, which is like a natural energy drink. I mean, you can put Kool Aid, you can put in that shit. Tropical in there. coconut crystal light, mix it up with your with your fifth. You got the sour Borg, which allows you to uh, you put you put the vodka of your choice, but then you put tart green apple liquid IV, which is actually pretty good. You green thunder MIO. So remember those Mios? Yeah. You squirt in there, really give it some flavor. And then a Jolly Rancher. Ooh. So you take it up another But lot. you got to do more than one, right, for a gallon? Got them uh, like five or ten Jolly Ranchers. Uh, you could choke. Remember, you're drinking a fifth of vodka. True. Be, be careful. You got the, the, the Borange Creamsicle, Ooh. which I kind of like, right? So you get the, uh, the orange-flavored Mio, the Tangerine Liquid IV, and then Whipped Cream Vodka. Oh. So you use that Pinnacle Vodka. You can do the Borg Punch, right? So that's a, a Fruit Punch Mio, Wildberry Liquid IV, and half a can of Strawberry Lemonade Celsius, and then your liquor and the water. And then the Borgonade, which you're going to use the standard Lemon Lime Liquid IV, Lemonade Mio, liquor of choice, and then Strawberry Lemonade Celsius. So there what's, you go. What's the Celsius? That's those are the, energy those drink? energy drinks. Okay. But obviously, that's the energy drink of choice for the board. Yeah, but a white monster would mix in, or any flavored monster. <laughs> Those white monsters are great. Yeah. Yeah. No, so this is, so you're basically getting energy drink. You're getting a ton of hydration. Yeah. Fifth of vodka, and you just slowly just drink your gallon. And by the I time- can see where you would outkick your coverage doing that, though, right? Yeah, but it's a, be- I love it. I, I mean, love the concept. I like the idea. Because what do they always say? The best way to but not it get is a hangover. Named Blackout Rage Gallon. Like, that's not a friendly name. <laughs> no. Like, you wouldn't want your kid doing that. I don't want me doing it, but I'm thinking about doing it. <laughs> I feel like we need to have a Borg Day here. I'll do a Borg Day. A fifth of vodka. That's it. No more, no less. <laughs> and but then that, a fifth of vodka for a... Oh, for a whole night, that'd be, it's well, that'd be doable, a, but it's a, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. I know at I know at UVA, their seniors on the last football day, game home game did fit, uh, fourth year fifth is what they called it, and you had an entire day to drink a fifth of whatever dr- alcohol you wanted. Yeah, you, you get your Borg all day. Yeah, but like most of those guys, if they they would start at seven eight in the morning. And I mean, by five, six o'clock, they were literally blacked out, like not well. Like it's not like no, it's a, not a good. No, a fifth of vodka is a fucked up thing. Yeah, and mine has beef broth in it because I only drink beef bourguignon. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a lot of beef broth in mine, so that you know, he's like, uh, it makes you stronger. A little cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Make it nice and chunky. Let the do it on a hot day. Let it, you know, really cook in there. Sit out in the sun. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> like a little sun tea, but you know, with your Borg. I don't see. Yeah, it's with that. That's beef stroganoff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I definitely would have tried something like that for sure. 
Oh yeah, we used to do like the you. So everyone was able to get through one bottle of Cisco. That was always the thing. Like yeah. Cisco is like a Mad Dog or a Wild Irish Rose mm-hmm. or a Thunderbird, a Night Train. They're all in the same category. But Cisco, I always found, was the most likely to uh, get you punched, and so that made it a little more exciting. <laughs> And the thing always was, could you do two Cisco's in it? Yeah. And I could do the one Cisco and be pretty yeah, loose. I, yeah. But it was that second Cisco. Oh, no, you're not all right after one Cisco. No. But that second Cisco. You know what one Cisco tends to make you want to do? Die. Drink a second one. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what a second Cisco makes you want to do? Go back in time. Yes. And not Never have drink Cisco again. <laughs> yeah. That's basically yeah. it. And so that was always the move, though, right? Like we, would, we would try to get through two Cisco's. And every time I did that, I was a pro- well, that's probably the equivalent of a fit. Yeah. Because I regret it every time I did two Cisco's. Oh, yeah. Every time. Yeah. But I kind of want to do a Borg. But you're also hydrating. Like- so what's the rule of thumb? If you drink one, you drink one drink, one water. One drink, one water. Yeah. Some people will say two drinks, one water. Yeah. I th- I, I'm actually willing to subscribe to both theories. They're good. Like that is the way to do it, and this this naturally makes you do that. And the liquid IV addition, yeah, is very nice on top of the water. Well, I was gonna say when whenever I drank, and I drank heavily for a long time, I don't recall ever purposely mixing hydration in. Like that's kind of, that whole idea is a new thing. Like you yeah. know to help you to help you maintain and not get I've over your skis. I've definitely done it. I've definitely done it. But more so probably later than when you were in college. No, like, never in college. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, I have heard about it. And I'm like, you know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. And I will be out and occasionally, like, if I feel like I'm getting a little fucked up, I'm like, all right, we slow down. But usually when water. you're feeling like you're getting a little fucked up, that's when you're making poor decisions. Like you, like yeah, but you, I'm old now. I was going to say, you have wisdom now. But, like, a college kid doesn't do that. No. 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 Now, maybe now they do. They're probably a little more aware, and maybe that's where the birth of the Borg kind of came out. You know, like yeah, it was two some, birds, one stone. It was some fucking meathead who was all like, no, man, you got to take care of that body. Well, it's definitely a meathead because the the milk jug is the, that meathead. Is the meathead thing. Yeah, you see, like you if see anyone's ever been to a weightlifting gym, the meathead carries around a jug of water and yeah. is pulling off that sucker between every... <laughs> Because he's going to get his gallon. Yeah, he's got to kill that gallon. He's got to hydrate. I, I had a, last year on the Scandals trip, there was a guy out there. And the Scandals is that, that, yeah, your that beach boat trip. trip I do. The island where you camp yeah. out on the island. There's this one guy who goes on that trip every year. And every day when he comes walking out of the cabin first thing in the morning, he's holding a gallon jug. Yeah. And he will not allow himself to not drink that gallon jug. Like, he's only allowed to drink as long as that gets down. That's yeah. like his rule. Does he drink the gallon before he starts drinking, or is it no, mixing just, it in? He, but, he, but he won't. It will, will not leave his hand. Like yeah, he'll because, have the other beer in his other hand, but he will drink that gallon until it's gone. And then he's like, I've done my part. Yeah. And that's like his rule. But when, we, when you were younger, we never did that. Like, no. you got drunk, and then the next day you just got drunk again. You might have a Gatorade in the morning. That's exactly Yeah. That. Yeah, where's the Borg, you know, kind of at your pets. I'm curious as to like. And if you think about it, right, you start with the Borg. You open the bot, you open the gallon jug. You have to drink the water to make room for the fifth. So you're guaranteed to get your gallon. Well, the fifth is mixed in with it, but yeah. No, but you have to chug out some water. Yeah, yeah. And then you pour in the fifth. So you're guaranteed. Unless to get you your start gallon. with an empty gallon and then you just. No, you can't do that. That's not cool. But. I guess it would be smart too. Like if you literally go to a party and all you have is that one, one Borg, and like you've you've just said this is what I'm drinking tonight. Outside of this, nothing. Yeah, if I'm late night, I'm still holding this Borg. Yeah, or I'm not, but I'm not. There's not other beers and shots coming my way. Like I've I've had my, like like showing up with a twelve pack, and you're like, once the twelve pack's over, I'm done. I'm out. Yeah, which I have a hard time with that. Well, it always, it, it always it takes a lot of self control to be like it's just this board, which is crazy to even say out loud. <laughs> I mean, a fifth, even drinking water and energy—it's a lot. Like 
in an eight hour period, like if you start at 6 p.m. and went to two, that's still a lot of liquor in an eight hour period. It's a lot. Even hydrating, that's a lot of liquor. I'm not arguing with you. But I would like to know, like, if it works. I'll find out. You going to do one? At least I can do. I'd like to see you do it. I like, But I'd like to see other people, because you're pretty good at maintaining anyway. You've always been able to maintain. Even when you get really drunk, you, like, you're How up. many times have you seen me literally, like, we turn off the podcast, and then I... I just shut down because <laughs> I'm drunk. It happens. No, but like I've never seen you like whether we be at a at a bachelor party or at a weekend somewhere, even here. Like I've never seen you like go sit down on the couch and fall out. But then I'm hiding it because it. I definitely do it. I've it's never seen it. Good. Then I'm doing my job. <laughs> I'm holding it together as best You're I can. You're usually up late night too. Like. But you know why? Because when I start to feel really drunk like that, I don't like it. I don't like laying in bed like that. Mm -hmm. So I start like drinking a lot of water. You want to come like, down? Yeah. Like I try to get myself out of it before I go to bed. So yeah. I wrestle those demons in the dark by myself yeah. up though. Not, I don't like, it's rare that I fall asleep like spinning. It happens. Yeah. But. Well, we definitely need to get a couple guys on board, on Borg yes. to, uh. Give it a test because I'm curious as to how it how it work. If it could even be done, it can be done. That's a lot of liquor. What's a fifth? A fifth of a fifth of a gallon. Your typical seven fifty bottle. Oh, that's way too much liquor. Yeah. Oh, I can't drink that. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll shit in my pants and go blind. <laughs> exactly. You'll black out and become a rage mo monster. Okay, that's too much. I didn't. Why did I think a fifth was like the flask size? That's thing? like. I'm pretty sure a fifth is. Let me Google it just to if make sure. If it's 750 but, milliliters, that's a shit ton of vodka. Yes, that's my point. I can't. I can't sit here and just drink a whole bottle of vodka and feel cool about it the next day. I mean, maybe over the course of the yeah, night. Yeah, 750 milliliters are in a fifth of liquor. I mean, maybe over the whole night. That's what I'm saying. It'd have to be a 10, 12 hour night, right? But it would taste so good. You see how much Mio they're putting in there and how much liquid IV? Like, like that's going to taste great. That's problematic. I need a bucket of fried chicken to go with that gallon. Ooh, that sounds good right It's 25.6 ounces of liquor. So 25 shots of liquor. Yes. Okay, that's problematic. You're going to need 12 hours, right? Because your body can process one drink an hour. Yeah, so then at the end of the night, I'm going to have 12 hours plus residual fucking nonsense. Yeah, yeah that's too much. You'll, yeah, but you, you can process half that. I actually so, don't want to do this. Liar. I get that there's part of me that does, and you're seeing <laughs> that part. But like, that ah, fuck it. I drink a Borg. Well, you're drinking water. I guess you could always add water, right? I'm adding ice, actually, throughout the day. Yes. I am. That's just that's me. the best way. I'm gonna add. I ice. wouldn't want to drink it hot. No, no, a hot Borg. No, come on, dude. No, Has, I'd like to know. Anybody else heard this? Anybody else tried it? Because I need to know. Inquiry minds want to know. Yeah, it's gonna be the young listeners that have done it. Yeah, because the old listeners are not Borging. No, but it kind of sounds like it's made for. You know who? Know who's the Borg guy? Who? Sealy. He's got the gallon sitting around. That fucking meathead would love. It sounds like he would love this. Dude, this is his thing. Yeah. And he'd find ways to keep his head on straight. We need to, this summer, we need to get like a random weekend day over here and just do a Borg party. I'd like to do a Borg tubing trip. Ooh. That could be problematic, though, because you're going to be sitting in that tube all day, like not up and moving and interacting and talking and like, you want that thing you want to be doing other things because if you're literally just lay back in a tube, you're going to drink and you're going to drink and you're going to drink that thing quick. You'll have that thing down in two hours. Yeah. You know, you're it, that's, that's, that's actually my biggest fear is that it tastes so good that you put it down and then you end up, you know, shitting and puking in the corner. Yeah. It sounds you want to spread it out. I think so. Yeah. All right. So your first time back drinking officially. <laughs> God, no, do that would be instant death. But then you would know that you never want to drink again. <laughs> oh, I'm actually yeah. doing this for your health. 
I'm doing this for your health. That would be a way to prevent somebody from drinking. You'll again. never drink again. Never. He'll be like, nope, I nope. tried it. Yeah. Turns out I hate drinking. I tried it, and drinking is awful. See, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. I'm curious to see how they could handle that shit. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> my body would fucking. Oh, man, my body would fucking hate that. Yeah, that'd be like me eating 20 salads. Imagine, too, like. It. Just imagine anybody drinking a Borg, like your body initially is going to be like, hold on, wait, there's alcohol and water and electrolytes and flavors in here. Like what is going on? So liquid IV makes uh, kombucha ones now. Oh God. So you can get like some good gut biome going, which you're going to need on account of the fifth of vodka. Don't you, I've never had kombucha. It doesn't sound good to me. But, like, would that shock your body if you, like, took in too much of that? So I've been buying these now. They have this sour apple one. And it and it's sour because it has all that. It, like, it's still the powder and you put yeah. it in water? Yeah. But it I has, thought kombucha, like, was alive and you had to, like, let it ferment yeah, and all that this stuff. Is, it's basically it. But it's basically it's that, it's that gut biome that's yeah. in it. So they have that, like, the probiotics and the gut, bio, gut biome crap, whatever the fuck it is. Do you feel different than a regular... Uh, Liquid I, IV. So I use those if I've been drinking heavily just to kind of replenish the gut biome. Uh huh. And get it. That you've killed off? Yes, that I've absolutely yeah. destroyed with the alcohol. So I've started doing the green apple ones with that. Mm hmm. With the probiotics just uh, after a hard night of drinking and then the liquid IVs after a basic night of drinking. There you go. I've really dialed it in. <laughs> I'm really getting. <laughs> you're listening to your body and you're growing. Yeah. So but, let's but Borg the shit out of it. Let's Borg this month. That's right. Let's just say I'm going to put them, them probiotics in my Borg. There you go. So I'm going to have the, the pro... Sour apple Borg? Yeah. Probiotics. There you go. See, you're made for this. I like all these names. <laughs> like, this shit is fun. Yeah. I wasn't Borg yesterday. <laughs> 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 Borg dad puns for yeah, days. No, there's so many yeah. of them. It's gonna be so good. I the, still want the beef bourguignon though. The Borg ultimatum. Oh, <laughs> nice, Jason Borg. <laughs> Borg on the Fourth of July. You know for the <laughs> for the party. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Yeah, we're getting some Borgs, dude. I like That's it. like the last smart thing you do is come up with your pun and then yeah. you put it on. And then the rest of the night is just blacked out rage. Fart, yeah, just fart yeah. jokes. <laughs> it's just horrible. Hey, we've done an hour 30. Well, then we've done enough. Feeling good about I that? I feel good. I, I don't. Too much fat tire. Yeah. Not enough Borg. No, the Borg was a good way to end. So let's uh, end on that one. Hey, I ain't mad at you, man. I'll let that ride. Yeah. Fair enough. We got to uh, keep them wanting more, you know? Keep them wanting Borg. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. I dig it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, man. We really do appreciate you coming here. The best thing you could do for us right now, honestly, is sign up your friends for this. If they want to listen to a couple guys drinking beers in a bar, well, then this is the place to be. We got you covered. Grab your buddy's phone and sign them up for the show. Subscribe them to Inside the Pallet House podcast. I tell you that, the name of the show, even though I, you should know it, because apparently you don't know who to sign them up for. So yeah. I figured I would throw that out there. And if you do feel like sending a little money to the Venmo, you can always do so. At Inside the Pallet House. That's the one. Or you can always find us on Instagram and Twitter at ITPH Podcast, or just go over to the Facebook page and check us out. You can like us there. You can uh, follow us. Basically, you'll get one thing a week, which is the episode. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I did notice when I shared the I have a small wiener, you know, you took a picture of it. Like, people were interacting with that. Like, Of course. Yeah, they're, like, laughing at it and stuff. That's good. Yeah. You're finally getting it. If you need a mortgage, please do yourself a favor. Head on over to Screen Door Mortgage and specifically ask for Jimmy. He's the one who's going to take care of you. He is uh, he's a hardcore listener, and he's a, he's a good guy. He understands the industry very well. It's a complicated process. He'll take care of you. If you need sunglasses, head over to Nectar Sunglasses. Drop Abacus in the coupon code. You'll get 20% off. We do appreciate the, uh, the time and support. And if you have a chance to send us topics, if there's something you want us to talk about, you can always do so at InsideThePilotHouse at gmail.com. 
We appreciate you. We'll be talking to you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Try that new fat tire. It's not bad. That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think? I do, Troy. That was a pretty good new version of fat tire, don't you think? Not bad. Not bad. Ah, uh, hell. <laughs> yeah. the truth.